Right, so we're now going to uh, give the ability for the client to send a message uh, to, uh, sorry, a, a status from Node.js to the client and actually um, sort of round off this ability to send messages by providing the uh, the status as, you know, message sent successfully or something like that. And this will also help us in the, in, in the sense of if a message is invalid. So if a user hasn't typed a message, we'll get this message back as well or haven't en hasn't entered a name. So we'll go ahead and hop over to our server JS code. And basically what we want to do here is we want to define a method that's going to allow us uh, or a function to allow us to actually send a status. So I'm going to call this send status. That's going to be a function. It's going to take one parameter and that parameter is going to be s for status and then all i'm going to do in here is socket.emit remember we've already seen this before down in here uh, socket.emit status and that's just going to be s so we're just passing a string in there is the ability to pass an object in here as well and we'll look at why that is in a moment um, but in terms of sending a status we want to test this out with the fact that you know we might not have uh, valid data here so if white space pattern test, blah, blah, blah. So we've tested our name, we've tested our message. If this is empty um, or is, is basically consisting of white space, we want to go ahead and send a status and we want to choose the status. And that is going to be name and message is required. Now, the reason we're doing the validation on the, on the server side is it can't be changed by a user. If we were doing the checks on the, on the client side, and we had these white space tests on the client side, the a user could come in and modify these and actually go ahead and send invalid data to our server, which we don't want. Because the client has control or the user has control over the client's code, it's insecure to be able to, to do that basically, or, or at least it will mess up our application. So we want to go ahead and only validate on the node side and then send the status back afterwards. So we've got this send status, but inside of our HTML, we now, uh, our index.html file, we want to listen for status. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we want to say, listen for a status. And we do exactly the same thing as we've already done um, elsewhere. And that's just socket.on status. And then we go ahead and provide our callback with the data that's returned. Now, there's a couple of things we need to do here. We need to check if it's an object, um, and then if it's an object, we want to extract the message from it. And this is a little bit confusing to understand at first, but you'll see why we need this in a minute. So I'm gonna go ahead and say set status. Ah, in actual fact, let's build the um, set status method first up here. This is set status. And all this is going to do is it's going to change this here, this idle. So set status is going to just take what we get and, and you know, do that. So um, I think it might be a good idea to go ahead and set a status default. And that's going to be status.textContent. So what's happened here is we have a status default. So let's go ahead and just console log that out. Now, if we look at our client, that says undefined at the moment, which it shouldn't do. Um, so let's just see what that could, ah, of course, because we haven't actually, you know, required in the node. So we're gonna say status is get node. And this node is remember chat status and status and the span within that. So this will now be this here, and then we can go ahead and get the default state. So that is idle. So inside of set status, what we want to do is we want to set the status of the uh, section. So we say status dot text content equals S, and that's gonna replace it with the the, uh, whatever we pass through to set status. So let's just actually test this out. Instead of console logging this, let's set status testing. And let's go ahead and check this out. So refresh, 
that's now changed to testing so we know that that works that's exactly what we want to happen but what we want to do is we want it to revert back to the original status after a period of say three seconds so we're going to say if s doesn't equal status default so if, if s isn't already idle then we want to go ahead and say var delay equals set timeout so we're using the set timeout um, function and we want that to be for three seconds so this will wait a period of three seconds then we're going to set the status back to status default so we've got the status default we're then overriding that waiting three seconds and then we're creating our well the delays creating three seconds delay and then we're setting the status back to the default and then obviously we want to go ahead and clear the interval delay so um, let's get, just test that out so when I refresh what should happen is this should change from idle to testing which already has we wait three seconds and that returns back to idle so we've got this functionality in here it's not massively important but it adds a nice touch because we don't want the status lingering around there so now what we can actually do is socket.onStatus is actually take this status that's passed through from Node.js and uh, through Socket.io, we pick up the status, we then go ahead and actually set the status accordingly. So we want to go ahead and say set status, and in here we're going to create a ternary operator which is going to check the type of the data that's returned. So I'm going to say type of data, so if the type of data is an object that means that an object's been passed back as the status in that case I want to go ahead and extract the message from that otherwise I want to just output data so assuming this is a string what I then want to do is if data.clear is true text area dot value equals nothing Now this is a little tiny bit confusing because we've not actually done anything with this yet so um, essentially what this is doing is it's checking if the status returned here uh, here is an object now in this case this is a string so what would happen is we would hit this this would sort of run the callback and then we would set the status it would check the status type if it's an object which it isn't it would set just data so we just output a string so set status data if we have an object we're expecting a message property within that and what that would then do is it will just output this is a string and then if data clear is true so we send this clear uh, property as well then we clear the text area and the reason that we do that is because if we for example and we'll just run through this quickly if for example I was to type in uh, hello here and forget my name what would then happen is this would send name and message to the node.js server it would return the error saying oops you, you know you you need to fill in your name and your message what it would then do is it would change this status to you know you need to send a message but it wouldn't clear this here but on success if we pass this clear property it would then clear this text area so let's just go ahead and sort of wrap this up and then it might make a little bit more sense if it doesn't already so we've got the functionality here but in server.js instead of console logging inserted we want to go ahead and send this data back so we want to emit this data back to the client so socket.emit input remember we're listening for input um, Oh, sorry, no, we're not doing that at all, are we? So what we're doing is call the insert. We are actually then going and we're using the send status function that we already created up here. So that's just taking in S, which is the status or, or an object in this in this case. Um, so we're going to go ahead and say send status. And in here, oops, in here, we're going to say message. And that will just be message sent clear true so now we're sending this status um, if everything's fine so if the name and message are there we're sending this status saying that we want to clear the text area and with our message which is then going to be picked up here and then if clear is available it will clear the text area so what we're going to do now is go ahead and open our browser and go ahead and just refresh and type in hello and oh okay so we've got let's just go ahead and remove this set status here and basically what's going to happen now 
is that when we type in a name or don't type in a name rather and type in hello, we get name and message required, which then after three seconds reverts back to idle. When we do go ahead and enter a name and a message, we hit enter and that actually sends the message. We've already seen that the database picks up on this and it stores, oh, Node.js picks up on this and it stores it. But now all we've done is we've just provided the ability for that callback to then empty that box and return an error if the data isn't present. So we've now wrapped up with creating uh, or returning statuses from our Node.js server.